Hi, HipKit friends. I am excited to be here today to share with you a layout that I made using this sketch as the inspiration. And I had such a great time. It's a fabulous sketch and all of the details for the challenge are in the HipKit Facebook group. So you can head on over there and um, read all of the details for participating in the weekly challenge and then submit your project playing along with the same sketch. So I created this layout using mostly, well, all patterned paper from the main kit. So this beautiful patterned paper that you see, both sides are fabulous, uh, but I used the colorful stripe. I love, anyone that knows me knows I love rainbows. So this was a fabulous patterned paper for me to use as inspiration and to play along with the sketch. So for the circles in the sketch I am using, two of them will be a photo and one of them will be patterned paper. So I was trying to stick pretty closely to uh, that sketch as far as the circles go. <clears throat> and it was fun because it was very different than a layout that I would normally create as far as like how I would lay things out on the page. And it was fun to do something completely different. So it definitely presented a challenge for me and I had a great time with it. So what I am doing now is I'm getting all of those circles ready. So I did, I've started with my photos, the two photos, one large, one small circle, and then a medium circle of patterned paper. And now I'm just making the mats for, for those photos and for the patterned paper. So I am using an old school <laughs> Creative Memories uh, circle cutting system. It's my go-to. I know it's I've used it for so long, so many years, that I don't even have to think about it. I just know how to do it and how to, how to size all of my circles. So I have a fancy new circle cutter coming in the mail, but we'll see if I ever use it because I love this the Creative Memories uh, set so much. So we'll see. So I did go through with the patterned paper and I used the Tim Holtz Edge distru Distressor to distress the edge of each of the patterned papers. So the mats on the photos and then both layers of patterned paper for the circles that I have there that are just made out of the paper. So here I'm gluing the photos down flat on that mat and then I will end up popping up the mat on craft foam. And then for the circle, what I did, this patterned paper circle, I actually, put that, the, the circle itself up on craft foam and then put the mat behind that. So I've got layers going on all three, but just kind of a little, little bit different, different way of doing them. And that just adds visual interest. Um, you can't really tell on a flat photo of the layout, but you can tell in person um, that those layers are a little bit different and kind of gives it fun, a little bit fun, makes it a little bit more fun to look at. So there's the general, the general layout based on the sketch. So I am going and tracing where I have those circles with a pencil just because I am going to add a little bit of just a very light mixed media to the background, just a hint of it really. Um, and I'm using the colors from the color kit this month with, from the September hip kits. So. <clears throat> The blue that I'm using here is the La P the Creamies La P Stance from Shimmers Paints. And that blue is beautiful. It is definitely a very creamy uh, layer of color and ink. It's pretty thick, goes on pretty thick. So I will, you will see me kind of getting the color everywhere where I want it. And then I am gonna use a paper towel to get up because I don't want, I don't want the, the ink in the background to shout. <laughs> I usually do, but in this in this layout I don't because really I'm trying to stick pretty closely to that sketch. So um, I want to. I just kind of wanted it to be a hint. I couldn't leave it alone. I had to have something back there, but I did it very subtly by placing it on and then using a paper towel to kind of get up most of it. And it is kind of fun if you use a patterned paper towel. So I have a pa my paper towel right now. The paper towels that I have are kind of almost like little checks. Um, and so it actually leaves that pattern in the 
in the ink when you pull it up. So I, you can't see it right now, but in the close up photos, you might be able to tell that actually leaves a little bit of a pattern in there, which is kind of fun. So some people use, um, when they're doing mixed media, they'll use just a, like a solid paper towel with no pattern, but I kind of like how it looks. So, um, because it's just another little added layer that sometimes people are like, how did you get that pattern in there? And I'm like, oh, that was just a paper towel. So it's kind of fun. Um, so here I did, you saw me with the green when I went and wiped up most of it. It did pull up almost all of the green. So you can kind of tell from the shimmers. So the green is um, the beach glass vibes. So it's actually a liquid um, medium and I'm just putting it on with a paintbrush, but you can tell that the thickness is very different from the creamies. And, and they're both from Shimmers Paints, same brand, but you can tell um, when I wiped it up, all of the color went away. So um, I added on a few more layers to go back and do that. And then the pink was Bahama Mama Inklings. So those, the Inklings and the creamies come dry and you just add a little water to activate the color. So here what I'm doing, is I cut out some leaves from the one of a kind cut file from April of this year, April, 2022. Uh, and I am using just the leaves. There were two different patterns of leaves in that cut file called one of a kind. And I needed some leaves because on the sketch, there's lots of leaves to the left of the biggest circle and to the right of the middle circle, the middle circle on the right. Um, and so I needed some leaves to kind of mimic how that sketch had it laid out. My leaves are a little bit different. It was very fall inspired on the sketch, uh, but I am using the leaves placed in the same placement, just with a little bit, a little bit more patterns and textures there. So here you'll see me, I'm using uh, just some cheap craft foam from Michaels and I buy it without adhesive. Michaels is our local craft store for any of you that are not from around here in Texas. We have Michaels in lots of states. Um, it's just a craft store that's got like all kinds of different kinds of things. So this craft foam you can buy with adhesive or you can buy it even cheaper without adhesive. So I use so much that I buy without adhesive and just add my own. So it definitely helps add some layers and some, tech, some dimension to your layout. And I'm getting those placed down first because then that helps guide where everything else is gonna go. So here are some of the leaves. I painted some of them with the, um, the Beach Class Vibes, the same green that I used on the background from the color kit this month. So some of them I painted and then some of them I left just patterned paper from the paper kit. So here I'm just using my, um, it's like a dry embossing stylus. I just use it as a little point to help me fold um, the leaves and flowers. I use it to help me fold up the edges of flowers as well. So this is one of the painted painted leaves so it's that same patterned paper but I just put the green um, beach glass vibes on top of it to kind of change the look because I wanted again by adding the varied colors it adds dimension and the visual interest to your layout and so here I'm kind of getting down the leaves to start and then I'm going to go back and add lots of flowers from the floral ephemera included in the kits this month. So a lot of the flowers in the floral, that ephemera um, pack, they already have the white trimmed off and then there are some that I'll, you'll see that I trimmed the white off of. So I love that many of them, I don't have to do any work for, they're just perfectly ready to go. And then I also did some fussy cutting from that floral patterned paper you just saw. And that's a floral pattern paper from the main kit for September. And then anytime I'm doing floral clusters, I do try to add different levels and layers. It just helps it look more like a big giant lush bouquet. So as I go, I add 
um, craft foam, sometimes two layers of craft foam, just to kind of give it a little bit of dimension and a very layered full look. And so some of those leaves are from the cut file that I used, and then some of the leaves are from the same set of the floral ephemera. And here I'm using that same stylus to kind of fold up the edges of the flowers. If you leave them flat, they're still pretty, <laughs> but they're much more, um, gives it your layout so much more texture if you bend up the edges of those flowers and you'd be amazed sometimes people ask me well when you put it in your you know in your album or in because I put all of my layouts and sheet protectors in my albums and they'll ask you know well when you put it in your albums don't don't they flatten out it's amazing that they don't when you have so many you now they will a little bit but when you have so many different layers and all of those um, flowers folded up and the leaves folded up and then I have craft foam behind the photos it kind of helps um keep the the sturdiness of the page and it really doesn't flatten out my flowers very much so sometimes people have a hard time believing that but I, I'll pull out layouts from years ago and they'll still have still have that that texture and dimension from folding up those leaves and flowers okay so here I skipped ahead a little bit um, just with some of the those floral pieces added, I started adding on the right as well, to the right of that circle, because in the sketch it had um, it had leaves over there as well. So this is my interpretation on that. <laughs> adding some floral clusters to each spot. And I'm kind of trying to build it to where it looks like that bouquet is coming out from behind the photo. Um, I didn't want like just a line of flowers coming out or leaves. I wanted it to kind of look like a, like a burst of a floral bouquet coming out from that side. And same thing on the right. I'm trying to have things going different directions and um, some high, some low some layered on top of the photo and of the patterned paper on the right, um, some layered behind. So I kind of want it to look like it's, it's like a floral explosion on there. It draws your eye in and it draws it to that photo when you have all of those pieces around embellishing that photo. And you can see that when I'm adding those floral pieces and the leaves, I'm not covering up any of the any of the photo itself. So you can still see all of the faces and all of the sweet little the sweet little cluster of my people there. That's my two babies with uh, my mother-in-law, my sweet mother-in-law, Nana. They call her. So we were in um, Pennsylvania. This for this layout. It's a layout from Hershey, Pennsylvania. When we went to visit her, she lives up there, and. Uh, we had just spent a day exploring the chocolate factory that top photo we're actually on a ride in the Hershey factory so it was kind of a fun memory it was a beautiful beautiful spring day so that's kind of what inspired this And it's such a vivid, I don't know if you've ever been to Hershey, Pennsylvania, all the colors, such a vivid place. Um, the chocolates and the colors and the all the different things there. It's such a fun place to go. So here I've added the title. So these are chipboard pieces from, um, also from that main kit. And I've popped those up on some craft foam just because that photo is popped up. So because I have the title layered on top of it, I needed to put craft foam behind the part that's not on top of the photo just to give it, keep it all at one level. So I did, um, and I, you saw I did put, put a little piece of patterned paper behind the word amazing, just a little torn piece of patterned paper. 
just to kind of look like it had something to sit on. And that's where the title on the sketch is as well. And then also on the sketch, there was a little cluster up on the top left, almost like a place for journaling or um, like another little title of some kind. So, and it had like a little piece of, like a little leaf sticking out of the top and almost looked like a little layered, um, layered cluster. So I'm kind of mimicking that same thing. I think these little journaling blocks are from the Project Life kit. There's so many beautiful embellishments and pieces and parts in the kits this month. So, and they all go beautifully together. They're all hip kit exclusives and they are coordinated perfectly to go together and work well together. So takes the guesswork out of all of that. What I did here, so that top, um, the top little block up there, it says recorded. Uh, that was a sticker. So what I did is I put that down on a piece of white, just plain white cardstock to take the sticky off because uh, I wanted to be able to distress the edges and pop it up and give it a little bit more weight. If you pop up a sticker that's that's kind of a thinner, like a cardstock sticker, sometimes it doesn't hold up over time. But by putting putting it, sticking it, adhering it down to um, cardstock, it helps give it a little bit more weight and keep it a little bit sturdier over time. Hopefully that makes sense. So then uh, once it's down on that thick cardstock, then I will go ahead and pop it up on foam. And I just wrote on there, Hershey, Pennsylvania. I always think it's important to put your handwriting in your scrapbooks. So I do try to do all of my journaling by hand and all of those little, any little uh, pieces of information I add, I try to do that by hand because someday my kids are gonna know that it was my handwriting in that book. So even if you don't like your handwriting, you should always do, try to add it a little bit for people that will look at it in, in the future. I have a friend that I scrapbook with and she does not like her handwriting. And so she never wants to write in it, but she has beautiful handwriting. And I'm always like, no, put it in there. Your kids will know that you wrote it if you, if they see that. So you should always do that. Here, I'm just adding a few little more floral pieces in the sketch. It had a few little pieces coming out. So I was trying to mimic that. And then I added one down below as well and popped that up. And here is the finished layout. I had a blast to doing this. So if you enjoyed watching the video, if you um, you can subscribe to the Hip Kit channel, tap the bell to be, receive notifications when new videos are added, and head on over to the Facebook group to join the Sketch Challenge. Bye, guys.